Now this is a Murex Elon Goddess. It looks like a, a crappy white one. It's not. It, it's an orange one. So let me see now. Reach for my wire brush. See this has very fine scales here. You don't want to damage the scales as much as possible. So you want to go with the grain of the scales. You don't want to go against this because it'll knock it off. The top part of most Mirixes are are usually encrusted. This is a very rare species. This is Elon Goddess. Now in Hawaii, this is rarely found. And when it is found, it's usually white. It's very rarely this beautiful orange color that you see here. This is the operculum, all right? So the reason why I use the next tech um, drill is because it's powered by batteries. You don't want to use one that's plugged into wall because of the torque. Torque meaning that when you turn it on, it's gonna see even this tip. See, it doesn't rip to my skin because there's only so much torque batteries can generate. But if you go from the wall, oh my God, it, it will rip you to shreds, cut you open, damage the shell. Get caught in your clothes and, and do some damage. So I prefer this down here. Push the button. Turn this counterclockwise. Change out the tip. See? Gotta push this, push this back in. Yeah. That's it. So this was a live collected one. Um, I think I did enough in terms of getting most of the coral off. All this coral here, I was able to wire brush before I soaked it in Clorox. Okay. So, let's see how it'll work out. Now, I use mineral oil because shells are used to moisture all their life. They're, they're nice and dry right now because they, they're be, they've been in the air for a while. So, There we go. The oil will um, re-moisturize the shell again. So what we're going to do is add back the moisture to the shell. As you can see here, doesn't look like much, right? Look at that. Isn't that something? Look at those colors. The colors just come right back because the oil is adding in the, sh in the moisture that the shell has lost. Sometimes you gotta let the oil sit for a while because the shell is like a dry sponge. It's gonna take some time for it to reabsorb the moisture back into it again. And I'm going to do some touch-up work here. You want to be as very light as possible with your hands. No need to rush. Always put your finger underneath. Try to take off some of that pressure. It's being applied. This is very interesting work. And you have to develop a soft hand over time. Here we go. Okay. 
the, the Perculum. The Perculum shows that the shells are collected live. That's why people wanted to see glue back in. When you find a cat's eye on the beach, that cat's eye was the Perculum for a turban show. And there you go. That's what it looks like. Now we want to put the Perculum back into the shell. So we're going to look at this. Now, the pointed side is always down. See the shiny part? This is the shiny part. And there's the not so shiny part. You want to keep the shiny part down because that is what connected to the animal originally. And the pointed side always goes down. So we get a little bit of cotton. Put it into the aperture. Like so. I just use just a little dab of Elmer's glue. Normally, I like the smaller bottles, but when I went to the store, there was no smaller bottles. So, what I do is I just dip the tip onto that. See that? Yeah, that's all you have to do. Now the perculum glued back inside. Isn't that nice? Okay, I actually was working on this shelf for about a half an hour before I made the video because I didn't want to be, be too lengthy. But I had to take all that coral off of here. Every square centimeter was covered with coral because this had to blend in, it, in its, with the natural environment. So now that we have the shelf done, I'm going to make a label. This is a Merix, but this is the Pater Notice type of Merix, Pater Notice. Okay. Elongatus light foot 1786. I had got this from Y and I. That one came from uh, Reef. Uh, let's see, where is that function here? At 105 feet. Okay, now we're going to take the measurement using a digital caliper. Fifty point five five, and looking at it, it's a nice orange one. So we can put down orange. Fifty. Okay, I'm sorry. Fifty point five five. So fifty point five five millimeters. And now we got our label written up, and I got this. It was in November of 99. So what I do is I keep these in um, eight carton boxes. I write on the top with a pen the date and the depth where I get it from, and I clean them when I have the chance or at a later date. This is very really rare to get a orange one like that. Hit print. One label. Okay, one more time. Okay. Cut it. Cut this label. And what I'm going to do is I'll probably put this in a... Um, I'll first clear this out. I'm going to probably put this in a plastic case with a foam pad. Goes right into your collection. And normally, like I said, these are white, but to get an orange one, it is kind of hard to come by. And it's a beaut. Hawaii is kind of like the northernmost range. You rarely hear about them being here, but they are here. And that's it.